Hey Team Pilot, welcome to your screencast on the molecule of heritability. So, this is the screencast is a little bit of the history of how we came to understand um, that DNA is the MOH, the molecule of heritability or the molecule of heredity. And, uh, okay, so the diversity of life on Earth is incredible. From yeast to giant redwoods, to armadillos. It's hard to imagine with such varying forms that much is shared between these different living creatures. Um, yeah, there's a remarkable molecule that connects all forms of life, and that molecule, of course, is DNA. So we now know today how DNA explains this great diversity, but this was not always the case. Uh, in fact, for about a hundred years, people felt um, and had good reason to feel that protein was the molecule of heredity, um, and they weren't really paying much attention to DNA. So the big question we're going to explore in this screencast is why did people originally think proteins were the molecule of heredity, and why was DNA neglected um, for so long in terms of the investment of time and energy that people uh, put into um, studying it. And it wasn't because they were idiots. Uh, they had some good reasons to think that protein was the MOH. So let's talk about them now. Okay, you all know that proteins are made up of amino acids. Mm, I should say the monomer of proteins are amino acids. And um, so proteins are uh, made up of amino acids. And there are 20 different types of amino acids. So in the number of unique building blocks that we're talking about, um, amino acids, proteins have 20. Um, DNA, so nucleic acids, their monomers are nucleotides. And um, DNA has four nucleotides, so DNA, four nucleotides, which is A, T, C, and G. This is a G here. And RNA also has four different nucleotides, A, U, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. Um, but you'll notice here that there's overlap of uh, across three. So if we were to add up the total number of unique building blocks, we see that there are five. Um, so just looking at the pure numbers here, um, given the incredible amount of diversity we see in living things, it seemed almost impossible to scientists living 100 years ago that the instructions for all life could be encoded within five different flavors, or really, it's only just four. Um, and... It seemed much more reasonable to scientists uh, living uh, 100 years ago that the 20 different types of amino acid building blocks um, were responsible for this great diversity that we see in living things. Okay, so proteins are much more complex in terms of their building blocks. So people thought, ah, that must be it. We can't explain this vast amount of diversity with something so simple as DNA. Um, okay, if we're talking about diversity among the molecules in a single organism, in humans alone, there are about 10,000 different types of proteins in the human body. And in terms of having different roles to play um, within those uh, 
within a cell. Um, so if you were to sample all of the different proteins found in the human body, you would see more than 10,000. Um, so a ton of uh, different roles of a single type of organic compound within a single organism. Okay, we now know that DNA and RNA are much more complicated and complex than we had, than we understood 100 years ago. But scientists living 100 years ago were able to chemically isolate DNA and RNA, and it seemed like there were only two forms. There was DNA and there was RNA. Whereas proteins, there were so many different types of proteins. So again, it seemed much more reasonable that um, because there was such a greater variety of proteins than there were DNA and RNA, that they were the molecule of heredity. Okay. Variability in molecular form. Um, oh, I guess also... I should also mention here that scientists already knew that platein, proteins played many important roles in living organisms because they had been able to isolate enzymes and see uh, the roles of proteins as biological catalysts, whereas DNA and RNA didn't seem to play any important roles. People couldn't quite understand what they were and why there were so, men, so much of them, uh, so much of the seemingly inert material in cells. That maybe kind of should have been a clue, but it was actually seen as a knock against um, DNA and RNA as a molecule of heredity. Um, because proteins, we knew, played such important um, in, in diverse roles, they thought ah, they must also uh, have played a role as a molecule of heredity. Okay. Variability in molecular form. Here is a uh, structural schematic of human insulin. Here is a picture of myosin. Insulin is a protein that's important in regulating blood sugar. And it's found, it's produced in the pancreas and it's found in the bloodstream. Myosin is a motor protein. that's responsible for muscle contraction. Um, okay. Uh, you, you'll notice that these have two very different shapes, um, two wildly different structures. A uh, hundred years ago, people didn't know the structure of DNA. That was part of the reason that we didn't know that it was involved in encoding genetic information. But if you looked at the DNA in, for example, the pancreas and the DNA in the muscle, you would see that it was just like, it was the same. And this was actually seen as a knock against DNA because protein had such greater variability in the shapes that it took on. People thought that this complicated structure must be the molecule of heredity. And um, scientists thought that the MOH would have structural diversity rather than structural regularity. Okay, so the last and maybe largest knock against DNA as the MOH is that humans are relatively self-centered. And so if we looked at the number, people didn't know the structure of DNA yet, uh, but we were people were able to isolate chromosomes and create karyotypes. And, um, you know, 100 years ago, maybe not 100 years ago, but between the discovery of DNA as the molecule of heredity and um, when people thought that proteins were these action um, enzymes as well as encoding the genetic information. Anyway, um, If you look at the number of chromosomes um, as a discrete pieces of nucleic acid in organisms, you all know that humans have 46 chromosomes. Silkworms have 54. Potatoes have 48. 
carp have 104. And chicken. Chickens have 78. So modern research has revealed that the number of chromosomes in an organism has little bearing on its complexity. But prior to the 1950s, this was not very well understood. Um, So this led people to... uh, conclude that DNA must not be important. If a carp and a potato and a worm and a chicken have more of it than humans do, it couldn't possibly be important. So this bias of humans thinking that uh, whatever the molecule of heredity is, we must have the most of it, um, excluded them from thinking that DNA was important. Um, So anthropocentrism, so thinking of humans at the center of everything, and human arrogance about our own um, centrality uh, obscured the true importance of chromosomes and DNA as the molecule of heredity. Uh, Okay, so that's it. For a long time, people thought that the molecule of heredity was protein, and they had some good, somewhat good reasons for it, um, or Not all of them were great, uh, but they were the reasons that people had. Um, We now know that it's DNA, um, and we're going to be talking in class about the journey of figuring out, um, or I guess the journey of how people came to understand that that was true. Okay, that's all.